Hello everyone, this is Karina from Break Fear, Find Freedom. We're talking today about landscaping, but it's always more than that. We're talking about the earth, about nature, about life, and mostly we're talking about Betty Houston, our beautiful guest today. Without further ado, sit back. This is going to be a good one. Remember that and um, put your, head, your headset on if you want to walk. It's always a good time to listen, right? And let's chat to Betty and see where this conversation goes. Hello, Betty. How are you today? Hi, Karina. I'm doing great. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here, um, Betty. I know uh, it's um, it's always such a big thing to to be on a on a platform like this, but it's about having the conversation, right? So thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Uh, what I'd like to ask you before we go anywhere else is tell me a bit about who is Betty? What are you doing? Where are you? What's happening in your world? Okay. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder myself. <laughs> <laughs> That's the beauty of life. <laughs> um, well, actually, sometimes I really do feel like I'm just redefining who I am all of the time. And, and I don't know that that's necessarily bad. I think it's a good thing to reevaluate and say, okay, well, this wasn't working, so let's move on. But where I am right now is um, I, I'm a landscape designer. And I do, all, like exclusively right now, I do uh, local landscape designs. I would love, love, love to break into an online, some kind of online landscape design kind of thing or something that's more online, something that's more, um, what do you call it, passive income. And But I still feel like it needs to have something to do with landscaping or gardens or the environment in some kind of way because I'm just so drawn to that i'm drawn to my garden i'm drawn to nature and i if you saw my yard my yard is a mess but if you saw my yard you would say oh my goodness i have edible things all over the place there's something blooming in my yard all the time it's just a it's a fun little place i've got squirrels and rabbits and and um of course bees and hummingbirds and all kinds of birds living here and it's it's just a really fun place so I'd love to be able to share that with everybody. I'd love for everybody to be able to have some kind of experience that's similar to mine. Not necessarily that they have to have my messy yard. But even if even if people are inspired enough to start a container garden or do something on a small scale, I would love to be able to teach people how to do that and make money doing it. But at this time currently, I do landscape designs. I help people with... Um, really basic like uh, hand pruning and things like that. I love that. Um, so I want to take you a step further. How did you get into this? Um, because this is beautiful. It's like, it sounds like it's a little place of heaven where, you know, I, I, now as you were speaking, I saw the image from um, um, Sleeping Beauty, I think. No, it was Cinderella, or one of them, where she's sitting, and I think it's Cinderella, where she's sitting, yes, it's Cinderella, where she's sitting with all the animals and she's talking to all the animals and they're all around her and helping her. And I just love that image because uh, it's just so beautiful. How did you get into this? Where did you begin and how, you know, like, uh, what was the path to this beautiful <laughs> oasis, it sounds like? Uh, hopefully it's not a really, really long <laughs> story. I'll try to make it pretty brief, but it's an interesting story. Um, I got married in 2001, it, and my husband at the time, had, he worked, well, he and I worked together at a, a, um, a factory. He worked, well, we both worked nights at a oh, factory. Yes. I, got laid, <laughs> I got laid off, and... I started working, I started helping his grandma and I started just getting some odd jobs. And then I got a full-time job. We almost never saw each other because mm -hmm. he worked nights, four nights a week. Wow. We would sometimes wave at each other. I was going to work and he was coming home from work. We would wave each other. That was it. We never really saw each other maybe two days a week. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we didn't see each other at all for a whole week. Wow. So he was mowing grass for his grandma and his mom and dad and his mom and dad's neighbor. And uh, 
and I helped him sometimes, he said, why don't you see what it takes to get a pesticide license and you can help me mow grass and we'll start a little business on the side. And then I don't have to work somewhere else. We can, you know, I can spend more time at home and then when he's off, we can work. So I went to find out about what it takes to get a pesticide license and apparently it's more complicated than just going to like take a test. So I ended up that day, I was working full time selling uh, mortgage refinancing actually. <laughs> and uh, I went into the the college on the last day of the last day of late registration. And I signed up for 21 credit hours of credits to get my college degree. <laughs> so not only was I, I going to get a license, I was going to get a whole entire horticulture degree. And uh, <laughs> I came home and I thought, I don't know what he's going to say about that. <laughs> I loved it. I loved every single thing about it. I didn't know the difference between, so here we have crepe myrtles and we have hollies and we have hydrangeas and a lot of things that a lot of other people have. But I didn't know the difference between a crepe myrtle and a holly or a cedar and a hydrangea. I just didn't, I didn't know. It was a, it was flowers and grass and trees. That's all I knew. Yes, yes, yes. And I loved it. I went to school every day just eager to learn. Soil science was one of my favorites. I loved it. I loved plant science. I loved the way the whole system, the whole ecological system works. Ecosystem works. works. Everything about it. And, and um, I just ate it up all the time. I, I couldn't wait to find out what new plants name. Like the, now the plants had names. They weren't flowers and grass and trees anymore. They actually had names. Yes. I loved it. So when I got, well, right after we started our business, like really at the time that I started school, but after I graduated, it wasn't a few months after I graduated, he quit his job and we went full-time, full-fledged landscaping. Wow. I love it. It's crazy. It was, we didn't know anything about running a business. So that was a struggle. It still is for me because I just dived in or dove in like like wholeheartedly mm -hmm. and, uh, so we struggled and and ended up we we couldn't work together that well and and I started just doing design then I worked for somebody else he worked for somebody else so he passed away almost three years ago oh I'm sorry and um it was it was kind of a it was a long process through everything the three or four years before that my dad passed away almost the same way that, that my husband did. And there's just so, so, so much going on in my life that I felt lost. Mm -hmm. And I was getting ready to sell my house and everything. I mean, literally, I was going to keep my clothes and my van and just run away. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know what to do. Wow. And um, um, I started looking around. I just started walking around my yard. And I, and I planted a large majority of the plants in this yard. And I put a lot of thought into what goes where and you know, what to do. And most of it's edible. There's just so many edible things in my yard. And it's, it's really beautiful. And there's, I mean, there, there are so much life in my yard. Mm -hmm. I'm walking around and I thought, well, I have a truck and I have three trailers and I have a tractor and I have a lawnmower and I have all these equipment and I know how to use it all, kind of. And um, so I decided I was going to go back into landscaping somehow. I didn't know how. I had no idea how I was going to do it or who was going to help me or what was going to happen. And um, that's what I did. And, and I feel like it was a great decision. And then I got caught in, um, you know, doing the everyday things again. And I forgot about my vision. So I'm so glad that you brought that up because <laughs> It helps me to reconnect to why I'm doing this in the first place. I love it. I just, I love it. I love, I love it all. I love being outside. I love watching nature do its thing. And I love that plants tell you, plants literally speak to us. They, they really literally tell us what they need. And I can walk by a plant and know what it needs because it's, because they tell you what they need. You just have to be able to read their language. You have to understand their language. I love it. I love being able to. I think I communicate better with plants than people actually. 
Uh, that's beautiful. I love that, um, I, and I can and I can resonate with that because you know I feel that with animals and plants and trees, I'm also very like connected to them. Like trees speak to you, and so I'm going to say that because it's okay. We've um, opened the door here, so uh, you know <laughs> we'll open the door to that. But before we go into that, which is which is probably a good place to go. How much fear did you go through? Because, I mean, it is very fear about freedom. But how much fear did you go through? Like, you lost your, your father, you lost your husband. Now you're alone. What are you going to do? How did you navigate through that? I, I don't know. My mom, my, my mom is, my mom is a remarkable woman. And, and honestly, I didn't know how remarkable she was until after my dad passed. Mm-hmm. So I, I leaned on my mom. I still do. And my younger sister, they're like, they're my team. They're, mm-hmm. you know, they're my biggest cheerleaders, like without question. And, um, um, and I, you know, so I've really, really depended on them to, you know, get through things. And, um, and I just don't know how much fear I really had. Karina, I feel like some of the fear I have is more of, fear of just putting myself out there, a fear of a fear of succeeding really more than anything, but it's the same fear I've always had. Mm. So my mm-hmm. fear, I don't think that I've really had a lot of fear as much as I, I had other feelings that I was going through. So when I decided I was going to do something with landscaping again, I don't know that it was a fear. I I think my biggest fear is um, is really just letting myself be a strong woman and um, you know and accepting the fact that I can be successful and I and I've always had that and my and my husband and I had our we had our issues and he was pretty um, you know he he was pretty he said some cool things to me sometimes you know. <laughs> And I took them to heart and I've held on to some of that um, for a long time. So I think, I think that fear wasn't a thing as much as, um, you know, just putting myself out there and, and letting myself be known or being, be, I don't know what the word is. What is that fear? Is it like fear of, is it, is it a self-doubt? Is it um, a, an, almost like an imposter syndrome? What exactly is that fear that's stopping you? Yeah, I think, I think the imposter syndrome really resonates with me a lot when I hear that. Um, I, you know, I guess I've held myself to be, okay, this is, I think, the biggest thing in our business. I pretty much ran it. I pretty much was the mastermind behind it. But Mm -hmm. I always made it look like my husband was, you know, he was the leader. He was the strong one. He was the one that everybody really, you know, depended on and all that. But at the end of the day, we wouldn't have had a business without me, you know? (laughs) And, and I think that I liked that. I liked being the behind the scenes person. And I liked being more of the, um, the support person and I've seen myself as being a support person. So being in a more leadership role is hard for me. And, um, and, and so it's easier for me to help other people. It's easier Mm -hmm. to be the support person for other people and help them, you know, build their business or do the things that they want to do. And it's less easy for me to, um, just be the leader and you know and kind of control my own destiny kind of thing and uh, and I don't know if that's a bad thing or if it's a good thing I, sometimes I you know I have a lot of self-doubt with that I don't know if I'm really just beating myself up over something that isn't worth that uh, I want to just as you were speaking I was thinking about how um, we, we brought up with these beliefs you know man is strong And, you know, he must be the leader and you have to follow as a woman. Whereas in many stories, you know that um, a lot of times the woman is the leader behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. uh, But the man, like you were saying, the man is there and he's shown and he's strong. But 
it's a partnership, right? But the two of you couldn't, you, you supported each other. And what I'm saying is that now, if you think about it, you, and you said it yourself, you, um, you were the mastermind behind this, right? You, you've created this oasis in your, in your home, in your garden. You, you, you connected to the flowers and to the trees. You can intuitively speak to them, right? You have this 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 beautiful um, connection and this beautiful vision, and yet you are um, making yourself small. Okay, right. yeah. um, and this is not a criticism. I'm taking this to a point, and this might sound harsh. Okay, and I apologize for that. Well, maybe I don't. I don't know. Nah, it's <laughs> <laughs> where I am. <laughs> what I'm saying, um, Betty, is it's almost like you are. Um, by, by keeping yourself small, uh, you are denying the world this beauty and this opportunity to share this beauty within you and to share yourself. Um, am I t you know, is that right? Am I being too harsh? Or oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in a relationship with a man that has a landscape business with his son, and he's just, he's amazing. He's like, he's really this amazing man and I and I love helping him so I'm kind of going back to that role again so I'm helping him and I love helping him and his business is doing really well and I love it and it's it's more doing well because of him and not me but but he says that to me often he he will tell me those exact words he will tell me that I'm holding myself small and he'll say you know if you really just would accept how strong of a woman that you are quit pretending like you're not <laughs> you know you, like you just don't know what you can accomplish and and I know that he's right I don't know how I mean I don't know what to do I don't know sometimes I'm so used to who I am and the smallness about who I am that I just stay there you know I feel stuck and and I'm you know, kind of right now I'm thinking, well, I could just do so much and be so much more, even with his business, even, even in my role with what I do with his business, I do all of their designs and they install them and, and I help them with answering phones and marketing. And, and it, it's a lot, lot, lot of fun. And I could probably really break out of that and be more and, and love myself more. I think that to the really big point, Karina, is that I really want to love myself. Yes, and that's where that's that's where the whole thing stems out. Because I, you know, when I'm sitting here listening to you, Betty, I have to say that you don't look small to me. Um, you look like you're this huge personality. You know, you you like filling the whole screen. Um, as you speak with your passion and whatever, it's like, wow, I wish you could see that, what I'm seeing. Um, and, and, and of course, it does. It always boils down to that, that we've always got that feeling within us that we're just not good enough. We're just like, how can someone love me? How can someone listen to me? How can someone even, even look at me or see me? How? Um, so I, I understand where you're at, but when else did you look at yourself in the mirror? <laughs> a little while ago, and I only have to look at myself right now. <laughs> that would be crazy, by the way. <laughs> I'm forcing you now. <laughs> I'm not used to looking at myself all the time. In fact, I got, had some stuff happen in my bathroom, and I don't even have my my mirror back up in my bathroom. So when I get out of the shower and everything, I do everything except fix my hair and makeup in in my bathroom and then I go to another bathroom and just do it really quick. And actually usually no makeup. It's just I put my hair in a ponytail and I put a hat on them. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't look at myself in the mirror very often at all. I don't. Um so maybe that's a start, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, there's the the, the age old. Uh, I, I don't know who started this. I think it was it might have been Louise. Hey, I'm not sure. Anyway, you, you know, looking at yourself every morning and saying, "Wow, you know what? I love you. You're beautiful." 
um, and I know it sounds I like trite, and, and I know that initially it's, it's what are you saying? Are you stupid? Because if you can hear yourself telling yourself off in your head, um, like, what is wrong with you right now? <laughs> <laughs> right. What are you doing? <laughs> but the longer you do it, the more those voices like think, oh, well, you know what? They just go, oh, she's not going to stop, so let me keep quiet. Uh, so, and maybe that's a start. Because once you see the beauty within yourself, then everything changes as well. And um, like I said, I can see that. Okay, this isn't a... a um, um, like patting Betty on the on the shoulders um, episode at all. I just thought it just is going there, and I just thought I'd mention that. Thank you. So, um, what I'd also like, and as you were saying, I'm thinking, oh, I'm so sorry we didn't do this episode in your garden, and maybe that's an episode for another day. Just a thought. So, um, tell me a bit, uh, Betty. Now that I've just thrown you totally. Tell me a bit about um, you, your, so how you connect, how you've learned to connect with nature, like you say, like you, you do. I, I think, I think the biggest thing was when I was in school and learning about plant science and soil science, I related all of that to people. So our bodies, the human body, has the same basic requirements as a plant. Mm -hmm. and, and we're all different, too, which is cool because we're all different. We all kind of have different needs. So, you know, some people are vegetarians and some people really, you know, can live and thrive really well all their life eating a whole lot of really, you know, fat red meat and, you know, bacon and whatever, you know. But, but our bodies are different. We're made differently. And the same thing with plants. Plants need, different plants need different things. So I started relating all these things together, and it's, it's kind of interesting. I'd actually really love to write a book about it. But I started relating things, and I said, if people were plants, who would you be? And mm -hmm. I would say, you know, some people, so I, I started with strawberries. I said, if people were plants and you were strawberries, then you would be this really tough plant that just hides amongst weeds and whatever. And if people can actually find you and realize what you are, you're a delicious tasty little strawberry. You just need a little bit of help getting the weeds out. I did it because my, my strawberry garden actually was doing that. It was just full of weeds. I thought, oh, look at this, there's strawberries growing in here still. And I all these weeds. And that season I had strawberry, a ton of strawberries. They were so good. And it was and it was not that much trouble. And then the strawberries just thrived. They didn't get any kind of care, really. They just kind of sat there and waited, you know, like, okay, well, somebody's going to just, like, encourage me in some kind of way, and <laughs> then I'll be there. So I feel like I'm that way. And then there's other people I, I said when my dad was getting sick, I, I, I compared him to an oak tree. He's strong and stable, and he provides, you know, the shade for the family, like a place for people to meet. And, and um, you know, an oak tree can also be a, a playground. You can put swings on it. And the kids love to play around my dad. And, like, so I made, I compared my dad to an oak tree because he was just, like, he was strong. And no matter what, no matter how hard the wind blew, he would just kind of blow with it and then he would stand strong. Like, and he was just, he was such a strong man. And I started comparing things. And then the haters in my life. I called them uh, wormwood. <laughs> and so, so Artemisia is a silvery plant. It's beautiful, right? But all the other plants hate it. And it will actually prevent seeds from coming up. If you're if little seeds come up near this Artemisia, then they just get that they just die out because they're haters. So, so I was just so I started doing that. I thought, well, this is kind of fun. It's so cool. People to plants because it was my only way of being able to relate to people. I couldn't, I, I don't get people at all, but I understand plants. <laughs> I, kind of, I kind of did that. And I think that it helps me because people say, well, I've tried to plant, and I've, everything I've tried to plant in this space dies. It doesn't do well. I'm like, well, because sometimes you have to understand your space, you know? And if you understand your space, then you put the right plants in it, that's awesome. Or, if you want 
certain plants, you have to change that space. So I, I started really realizing um, how important it is to learn about plants. If I'm going to, if I'm going to tell people where they need to put their plants, then I need to know about them. I need to know where they go and what kind of soil they need. And um, I think I went way, way, way off track from what you said, Karina, but, but no, I just, it, I'm so passionate about it. I know I can hear and it's beautiful and as you're speaking um, I'm, I'm getting all these ideas in my head and we can chat, chat about them afterwards because I don't want to sidetrack. Mm -hmm. I'm getting all these ideas in my head about the possibilities. You've got endless possibilities in front of you. You do know that right? I think I do. I just don't know how to get there and then when I start I have so much self-doubt that I just shut down. I really and yeah. it, it's not a good habit. No, but that's something that you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn, you learn. And if finally one day you'll realize, oh, hang on, the self-doubt isn't there anymore. I'm actually feeling better about myself. Wow, this is a good day. <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, I love that. And I love that comparison. And you were speaking about writing a book. And please do, you know, I'd love to be, I'd love to help you write it. If, you know, I don't know. It would be really great. It would be a beautiful book. And again, I can see, hey there, we're just breaking from the episode for a moment. I just want to tell you about something that's really, really exciting. We speak a lot in this podcast about self-worth and self-doubt and self-belief. And so I have this very exciting challenge for you. Because what if, what if you could break down self-doubt and find self-worth and find those treasures within you so that you can show the world your value because you know and find your beauty because it's there. You just need to find it together. So I've created a five-day mini challenge. It's a one-on-one -on -one coaching experience. And together we will work through this and find those beautiful treasures within so you can shine your light to the world. If this sounds like something you're interested in, we've got I've got all the details on the pinned comments below this video. So thank you for listening and let's get back to this exciting conversation. Okay, we'll talk about that also in another uh, afterwards. I can just see this book for it already. I, I, I can't remember the subtitle, but it was Landscape Latin. Yeah, landscape Latin, how to speak the language of your plants. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's you. beautiful. Um, so, yes, you see, so it's, it's again, there's so much passion there because it's not only about planting and putting flowers and, you know, creating a garden. It's so funny. I walk a lot. And as you walk um, through the gardens here, because, I mean, that's, in San Diego I can walk, right, because the weather's okay to walk. It's, um, and as you walk, I, I love to look at the gardens and I love to look, look at the trees and you can always see the gardens that have been landscaped with passion and with, 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 with love and then the others that have just been landscaped. Um, right. And you can see the difference and the flowers feel it because they grow differently or they don't. Yeah. So and I suppose it's like that with everything, right? You, you give it a little bit of love and it just thrives. Mm -hmm. I, think so. I think yes. that's true. I think it is true with everything. Yes. Yes. Anything that's neglected just kind of falls in and or you know, somehow anything that's neglected doesn't doesn't thrive at all. Mm. And, and plants are a good thing about are a good analogy, but also houses or cars or yeah. our bodies. And then that's always a reflection of your self-love as well. You'll see um, a lot of people, if you walk into, if you get into their cars, you know the state of their cars reflects the state of them. Um, or, or, you know, if you, if you look at someone's house as well, you can see the state of their mind by their house. So it's, it's, really, it's really beautiful um, to add those analogies, right? Right, yeah. And and neglect is a big one. It is. It really is. And self-love is 
also i mean it, it's the exact opposite but it, yes. it's it's literally the same what you put your energy into is what's going to be the healthiest the look of the best and and you can tell that it's taken care of whatever yes. it is yes yes so tell me a bit about so you just mentioned a bit about what you, you what you want to do in the future tell me a bit about um your your vision now for the so, okay let me take that a step back you say that you're helping your your partner with his landscaping business does that mean that you've just left your landscaping business you're not working on it in, at all or you is it just become like a like a fun project yeah it's it's taking a lot more time than than I expected at first, but, um, but at the same time, it's a lot of fun. He's, he's a lot of fun to work with and I'm, and I'm, I'm enjoying it. And maybe right now is, is a good time to do that because he's building his business and I like being able to be a part of that. Um, I do want to have more landscape designs to do, and that's still a part of the big part of his business and mine. Mm-hmm. So whatever landscape designs I do, that's my business, and um, and then they install it, which is great. I I want more of that, and sometimes it feels like you know, it gets so much stuff, you know, like like the everyday stuff, and then at the end of the day, I'm just fried, you know, I'm, I'm tired, and and uh, and I'm out there in the trenches pruning and talking to people and selling and. And I love that part. I just, and like I said, I do love that. I love being that support person. And I feel like I'm really great at it. But I would like to find a way where I can transition more into doing things that I love, the, the design and marketing more and less of the other things. And I, and I think he wants the same for me, actually. So I don't, I don't feel like, I don't feel like anything, I'm giving up anything. As much as, as much as I'm concerned that I will get complacent to what I'm doing and make it easy to just, you know, start to say, okay, well, this is easy. I'm tired and, and, um, not, not give, not give up, but kind of give up. Yeah. And I don't want to give up on my dreams and I don't want to, I, I don't want to let my passion, I really would like to write a book and, I think most people that write their first book probably have to work somewhere full time in some kind of way <laughs> while they're doing it because you can't just like stop everything and write a book. So or I guess some people probably can, but um, but it has to be a book on their expertise. And then I do that whole imposter syndrome, like who am I to write a book? Oh, yeah, like how dare you? How dare you, yeah. Betty, write a book? What is wrong with you? Okay, I sorry. <laughs> I don't know, but I have like this book has been in my mind since I think 2011. I'm pretty sure, and I've written part of it. I'm not sure. I'm not sure where it is. It's on a flash drive or a computer that has crashed or something. I don't even know where it is. So I feel like I just I just start all over. It's so long ago that I just start all over. But I just I, I love, and there's other people who have written books like it. I don't think anybody really has that. Well, nobody is exactly like anybody, right? No. no. So whatever I bring to the table is going to be different from anything anybody else. Of course. Of course. And you have this whole different idea and you've got this this deep understanding um, and perception of it, which makes such a huge difference. So that will come through in your writing and in your book. So, um, and I think the more you want, the more you try and resist it, the more it's going to scream at you and start shouting at you that it has to be done. I think that's <laughs> true. I think that's true. Like your Facebook message to me, right? <laughs> <laughs> like, come on, do you dare? <laughs> I couldn't resist it either. <laughs> I <said>, And you did dare, so good for you, yeah. Betty. You yeah, took up the challenge. I, out a few times and I, thought, I don't know. I don't know if I'm the right person for you to talk to. And I, but I did that, and I thought, well, that's probably exactly why I need to be there. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And now I'm going to go back to your landscaping, 
to your designs. What do you love so much about it? Why is it that part that is so exciting for you? I have, a, it's my superpower. I have this knack for taking something that somebody says and turning it into some kind of reality. Something mm -hmm. that is more than they could have ever dreamed of. Mm. And, and I do it all of the time. It's not, it's not a random thing. Every once in a while it works. It has not worked one time. There was one lady who was so disappointed and so she's angry actually. And I thought, okay, it was a long time ago. I, I thought, well, I guess I didn't understand her. And I redid her entire landscaping because I didn't understand her. And mm -hmm. I think after that, I learned more about how to listen it was a very long, long time ago when that happened. It was probably in 2005 or six. It was a okay. long, long time ago. Warning, but now I did this design for a lady, and I and we, and we our team, um, um, installed it. And I did a lot of the install myself. I did a lot of the work. I was really hands on, and I didn't really get to talk to the lady very much. I talked to the the guy that referred me to where he was, he did a lot of the work actually. Mm -hmm. And um, he gave me more of the information than she did. And I misunderstood her a little bit at first. And she kept saying, I don't know why you and Glenn keep wanting to do something with this bed. And my real concern was this other bed. I just thought I heard her that way. And when I got done, she said, you know, I did say that I wanted this screaming and I wanted this and I wanted that. And she said, I just couldn't put it in my head that could work. She said, I couldn't get it in my head that we could actually make something beautiful out of this area that looked awful and, and, and love it. And she loves it. I mean, she absolutely loves it. I did have to change a few things. Um, because I didn't quite understand some of the things she wanted. And there was more sun than I thought. But that kind of thing happens. I changed a few things as we went, and it turned out beautiful. And she said, I just can't believe that this area could actually look like that. And she said, I didn't know what it was going to look like. I didn't understand. didn't make sense to me. And she said, but I believed you. She said, I felt like you knew what you were doing, and you obviously do. And now she wants me to do another little project, a really small project that she's paying three thousand dollars for. Wow! She said, it's this little area, and my budget is three thousand. I thought, wow, that's a pretty small area for that kind of money. So she obviously trusts me, and she appreciates what I did. And and I do that a lot. A lot of people just say, you know, I gave you the information that I couldn't really put into words, and you get me. And they just say that, and you get me. And I love that. Like, that makes me feel so good. And I also get plants. So I put the right plants in the right place. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they take a little while. They struggle a little bit to get established. And I tell people, don't worry. It's the right plant in the right place. Just needs a little bit of time. And, um, and then three weeks later, they say, yeah, you do. And they love it. And I just I love that. I love, love, love people telling me how great they feel about their whatever it is oh, that's beautiful that's beautiful now now that already on its own should um, make you see um, Betty how much and what a difference you're making in people's lives um, so even that on its own you should you should be able to look in the mirror just for that and say wow wow Betty you know what I celebrate you today I, I would just like to do more of them I, and I think that's a marketing thing. I think that's one of the, you know, I want to do more of this. And yes. I end up doing more of this. And I have to do this in order to get that. And so I think it's, I, and everybody, I'm sure, especially people who own their own businesses, everybody goes through that. You know, in order to get this, you have to do that. And some of the things you don't like or you don't understand. And, and, or you have to, pay just... to do it. And who do you pay? And I don't know. Yes, there's always so much to do. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so I love that. And um, again, as you were speaking, I have um, a friend of mine who has this this slope in this 
hill in her garden and she doesn't know what to do with it. Mm -hmm. And I thought to myself, oh, I think we must make an introduction here. That could be anyway. <laughs> <laughs> That's off like, okay, my head is going everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, but but um, the reason I, I mentioned that is that you probably could do, um, and I don't know if you're doing it now because I know you're on the East Coast, but you probably could be doing virtual um, consultations anyway. Yeah. yeah. I, I really thought that there probably is a real market for that, especially now, because COVID really opened the doors to more virtual mm. um, everything, virtual businesses. And I think that's true. The, one of the challenges with landscaping is climate and soils, and, and um, there's, a lot of, there's a lot of things that really work well here where I am. Mm -hmm. that would not work in San Diego mm -hmm. and would not work in Montana. Yeah, and, of course not. And I wouldn't even know. I mean, I, I wouldn't know what the difference of the soil is or the climate or you know, just because it rains 50 inches a year here and it rains 20 inches a year somewhere else, you know, it, that doesn't give me enough information because the soils are different and um, the humidity is arid or is it humid and and uh, there's so many things and how cold does it get and how hot does it get mm -hmm. so those things i think are i think those are the biggest roadblocks with landscape design and i don't really know how i would i don't know how i would work through that part mm -hmm. well it's a thought it's a thought. better homes and gardens seem to be able to do it <laughs> yes 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 <laughs> That's true. That's true. There's always a way. I think so. I think so. I did a landscape for my sister in Colorado um, years ago, and the, everything in Colorado is different. Everything. But you lived in Colorado, didn't you? So you know Colorado. I did, but I didn't. I wasn't a landscaper. In Colorado. <laughs> I, knew I was flowers and grass and trees. That's all I knew when I lived in Colorado. <laughs> yes, yes. I knew how to mow grass. I kind of didn't really like it. But, but I learned enough. You know, I, I called the garden centers and asked them what kind of plants they use, and I, and I checked on the plants we were using, that kind of thing. But, and she did a soil test. The pH, the pH of soil here is really low, and the pH of soil there is really high. So that was a huge challenge. And so I had to check and see what kind of plants like what, Kind of thing. And, it, and it turned out really nice. Mm, you see, you see, you see. Yeah. There's a way. There's yeah. a way. But and dandelion, you, dandelions live anywhere. So, you know, if I can. That's true. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I can figure out a way. I can figure out some kind of way for me to sell dandelion designs. That would be awesome. <laughs> and they're pretty as well, you know. They, right. they are, and they're edible. And they're, yes. they're one of the most useful plants that there is. I mean, there are, all of them are, have some use, but dandelions will send a taproot real deep into the, into the soil, mm -hmm. bring back nutrients to feed the other plants around it. And because it uses a taproot, it doesn't take water from the other plants. It gets its water from deep in the soil, and it's edible. And it's the tea, dandelion tea is supposed to be really good for your stomach, I think. It's supposed to be really healing. Um, every part of the dandelion is edible. So oh, there you go. You see. <laughs> and, and, it's, it's it, and it's pretty as well, which is a bonus. Because I, th <laughs> I think um, a lot of it, so do you do you do a lot of like organic flour, um, organic um, farming, organic um, gardens um, do you use sustainable farming I mean I don't know I'm just throwing some words out and does that really make a difference or does it depend on your client I I tried I really tried at, at the beginning of, of doing my business I, I tried to do a lot of organic which that was a long 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 time ago and there wasn't that many supplies available at that time mm -hmm. my own garden I, I do like to put and uh, to use as much organic things on my garden as possible but it's really hard it's really hard to keep a lot of the insect pests off and it's you know it's really hard 
but um, but as much as I can, I do try to be pretty organic. Mm-hmm. And there's some there's sometimes that I just feel like there's not there's not a lot of other options. <laughs> you know, you just got to do what you got to do. Yeah. I but I try as much as I can, and I do think it makes a difference. I like a hundred percent. I absolutely do think that it makes a difference. I think that our bodies really do need to have as much as the natural kind of foods that we could possibly get. Mm. But it's hard, you know, it's hard and it's expensive and, and a lot of those things don't work that well. And it takes a lot of work, a lot of effort and mm. a lot of money. Mm. Mm. I wish mm. I wish it wasn't that way. I really do because it is um, it's challenging. And I do have customers. I have one. I have one client that will absolutely not let me use any kind of chemicals at all at her house. Like nothing, no Roundup in any kind of way, no any kind of chemicals. Mm-hmm. And, and the weeds are awful. They are so bad. And um, and they do and they have a lot of pest problems in their garden, which I don't do anything with their garden, but their garden is just it's beautiful and then it just gets completely torn all the pieces with mm. um, with insects so I'm sure that there's I'm sure the people who really really know probably have great um, solutions for that I just don't what would I do what do so do you um, do you grow your own fruit vegetables I I try. I, this year, <laughs> this this is how far I'm so embarrassed to tell this, and this, everybody in the world is going to see this or say, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> I used I, I used to have like all kinds of garden. I like I play with different kinds of squirrel. I did a, a straw bale garden last year, and I've done biointensive gardens. I've done all kinds of things, and I've had gardens. I've had gardens in my front yard in all, for a long time, but I. Doug got, Doug got some tomatoes that came up in my compost pile like a few weeks ago. I dug them up and I like cleared out a space in my garden that's overgrown. And I put them in, I just put them in the ground over there. I thought, well, at least I'll have a couple of tomatoes. I don't know what they'll be. They'll be something, right? I put, I, I did plant heirloom tomatoes, so it should be something that I planted last year. And I put some basil with it. And, and then I, but here's what I really do. And I really, I really feel like this is kind of more of my calling anyway. I changed my garden in the front yard to more of a perennial garden. So mm. I did have blueberry plants already there. And yes. in the strip that had tomatoes and peppers and had an eggplant, there was several things and quite a bit of herbs. I changed that bed to everything perennial. So now I have strawberries and asparagus and herbs. In that mm. one. Strawberries and asparagus are really great companions. They actually help each other and they bring in beneficial insects for each other and they um, they they help each other thrive. So that's oh. a good way of being more organic, right? Mm. Mm. So I did that and then I left some of the um, herbs that stayed there. Borage came up. Borage is a really great companion plant for strawberries. So all of those things I've just left in there and I thought, you know, I'll do that. And then in the middle of this area, it's a it's a round it's a circle. So I've got blueberries on one side, and then I've got this little strip of strawberries and asparagus. And then in the middle, I'll probably just make a little create a little circle inside of that and put wildflowers or something in it, just to attract pollinators and make it look more beautiful. Pretty. And then the other side, um, I have something called honeyberry. I've never I've never used it before. I've never even heard of it before. I bought these things from a local nursery that, that, that sells useful plants and edible plants. And it's it may or may not actually thrive here because it gets so hot here. It's mm-hmm. more of a cold weather plant. But I thought, um, well, let me, let me try it and see what it does. And it is, go, it is doing really well. Wow. <laughs> and the rest of my landscape that is doing well is I've got other blueberries. I've got something called gumi berries. They're like cherries. It's super easy plant. I don't really do anything to it. It attracts birds, and it and the berries taste good. I can make jelly or whatever with it. And I've got um, grapevines. 
So muscadines grow here. Oh, nice. And, um, so I like that. And and then, of course, I have my herbs kind of planted in st- strategically in different places. I've got a hardy citrus. I'm in a place where citrus doesn't grow, but it's a it's called a hardy citrus, and it has some kind. Of, I, it hasn't had any fruit yet, but it has some kind of fruit. I've got a mulberry tree. I've got some kiwi, some hardy kiwis. They should produce fruit in a couple of years. So things like that is more is really more where I'm going because I, mean, I guess I'm kind of a lazy gardener. <laughs> like I don't have time to come home and really pull weeds and fix things and can and all that. But I do like having edible things in my yard and I like attracting wildlife. Like mm. say Alice in, or Cinderella or Alice in Wonderland or whatever. You know, I sit out there with my rabbits and squirrels <laughs> and I don't have time to, I don't have time to pick tomatoes. <laughs> I don't know. I don't really know. I would love to have a garden, and if I find the time in the next week or two, I, I might do it. But I, um, I, I have. In fact, I'm embarrassed. I'm embarrassed because I don't. I'm, well, that's, it sounds beautiful. It sounds like a, a, a. It sounds like something I'd love to just walk through and pick a, a strawberry and pick mm-hmm. some mulberries and ha! Ah, what more do you want than that? You know, right. <laughs> it oh sounds goodness, like a beautiful candy. place. It's like candy growing in my backyard. I'm not <laughs> kidding you. It, especially when the grapes are ripe. Oh my goodness! It like they're like candy. I oh, but especially those. Those are sweet, 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 right? Oh, sweet. Oh. Yeah. And it is it's fun. My yard, when it starts to pop, it really starts to pop. And there's there's strawberries. And I and I don't mind eating asparagus raw either. But, um, but I do love that. And I like to just have more perennial kind of things like that. And it, it's just so much easier. Mm-hmm. And, and I think it's beautiful, too. Yes. It sounds beautiful. And like I said, it must be heaven. Like in the mornings, oh, let me go and have take a walk in my garden and have, have breakfast. Right, exactly. <laughs> exactly. And then in the afternoon, I walk in my garden and say, oh, I'm going to get some candy. <laughs> yes. Oh, I'm, I'm really have a sweet, I have a, I'm really craving some sweetness right now. Perfect. <laughs> The blueberries, the blueberries are just about right. My gummy berries are pretty much done, and um, and I didn't do anything with them this year except every time I walked by or run, rode my lawnmower by or whatever, I ate some. But my <laughs> blueberry now that's a different story. I will I will stop and gather blueberries. And they're just about right. Actually, oh. there's some of them might be ripe. I haven't checked lately. Really. Yeah, yeah, blueberries. Ah, oh, you can never have enough blueberries, right? Mm-hmm. No, you can't. I love them. And raspberry. I planted a raspberry. I picked one just a couple of days ago. It actually was ripe, but I had not had. I planted it a few years ago. I haven't had raspberries on it yet. So that was pretty exciting, too. Yeah. So this so, is a good year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As far as the garden goes, I maybe I live my life in the same way I take care of my yard. I, if it's easy and kind of just comes natural and it does its own thing and it can take care of itself, then that's awesome. Yes. And if it needs, if it requires a lot of care and effort and all that stuff, I just don't know that I got it in me. <laughs> I could go to the farmer's market. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Uh, you need to like go with the flow and have and enjoy it. It's, if it becomes an effort, then it's there's something that doesn't feel right with it, right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like people do that with their businesses, or I've done it with my business, or maybe I still am. That your business owns you. Yes. You know, sometimes it you wake up in the morning and you say, "Oh my goodness, what is my business going to tell me what to do today?" And I guess that I guess that's kind of where I got burned out on the garden. You know, you have a garden and you have to go pick your squash and you have to pick your cucumbers and you have to keep up with all your tomatoes. You have to keep up with so many things Mm. that it gets to be a burden and it's a lot of work. And then Mm. when you pick them, then what you can do with them, if you don't sell them, then you have to cut them up and freeze them or can them or cook them. You know, it's, it's a lot of work. A garden is a lot of work. And I think that's why so many people really don't have gardens or they get burnt out on them. Mm-hmm. And it's it's so easy for your passion to become your um, 
chains around your neck and you don't want it to do to to you know you don't want that to happen because then it destroys everything and finally you'll say you know what i'm I, i'm out right. and you leave because you know you burn yourself out and it's just too much mm-hmm. yeah. so tell me betty have you found freedom have i found freedom yeah i want to <laughs> <laughs> I, sometimes i feel like Sometimes I feel like I'm I'm finding freedom. You mean from our conversation? Wherever I mean, freedom is such a personal thing. You know, it, it means different things to different people because it's such a broad term. So I'm saying, have you found freedom for Betty on Betty's terms? Yeah, I, in so in so many ways, I feel like I do. I feel like I I have a lot of freedom, and in other ways, I feel like. You know, I, I get kind of stuck sometimes, and I feel like like everything around me is kind of owning me or directing me. And and then I say, well, I was the one that chose that, and that was the path I wanted to go. So I was free to make that choice, and and it's probably a better choice than some of the other ones. And I don't mm-hmm. want to be alone. That's another thing. I I think you know, having my own business, I. I one of the biggest things is I just haven't wanted to be alone in it. Mm-hmm. And it's a big deal for me to be a part of something bigger. You know? Yes. Yes. So and there's a and there's a lot of freedom in that. In my house and my yard and what I can do here, I do feel free. I feel like you know, I own this. And if it's messed up, I own that. You know, and if it's doing great, then I own that. And I love that part because then I'm I'm free to to make those changes or make those difference. Yes, I love that. Um, it's amazing how much freedom there is in owning it, owning it, and saying, "Okay, this is mine." Like you said, it's mine. If it's messy, it's on me. If it's not messy, it's on me, and I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that really is freedom. Yeah. That is freedom. That is because, at the end of the day, if I if I don't feel like I made my own decisions, then I'm not free. Hmm. 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 I love that. That is beautiful. Um, before we go, what last um, thoughts do you have about life, landscaping, whatever you want to say? I, I guess. I guess I'm, I'm really, what I'm really wanting to get from, from our conversation and, and from, you know, from who I am is I really want to have the confidence to, to write a book and to reach out to people like you or, you know, whoever to say, Hey, you know, I want to write a book and this is my, these are my ideas. And where do I go? Where do I start? What do I do? You know, like, like something. Give me something to start with. Do I write a chapter a day, or do I, you know, like, you know, where do you go from there? So something along that line. I think that, you know, I think that that's something that I just have had on my mind so much that it's, um, you know, it just keeps coming up. <laughs> um, and it sounds like it has to, it has to come to, it, it, it's, it's waiting. For yeah. the light of day, it's there. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's time. You know, I, I think it's time for me to just step out and, and just do it. Yes. I mean, how cool would it be for me to, you know, put on my LinkedIn profile the author of the book? You know, like, I think that would just, like, something like that would just make me feel like, <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, look at me. I love that. Um, so I think we should put out that challenge. So, okay, Betty, the challenge is here. It's up to you. Are you going to write the book? And am I going to say the same things I said to you on our message when we spoke on um, Facebook? Do you dare? <laughs> right. I love book? that. I actually really love that. When you said that, I thought, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. And it took me a little while to even respond to you. I know. I saw that. <laughs> maybe. Maybe not. <laughs> but I love that. I love the way you seem a lot. So, yeah. So I dare. Okay. Good. So the challenge is out. 
Do you dare write your book, Betty Houston? And um, on that note, I think that's a perfect place to end this episode. And of course, you know what? We are going to keep in touch with Betty and see how far the book goes or how far all your other projects go just because we can. And maybe the next time we can have a tour of your garden and speak with you some of your flowers. Why not? Right. That would be fun. Yeah, that would be a lot of fun. Thank you, Betty. Thank you. Thank you for being here. This was a beautiful conversation. I loved it. Um, it's just so beautiful to see things from a whole different perspective and change changes everything. So thank you for being here. And um, hopefully we'll speak soon because you'll come to me this time and say, hey, Karina, do you dare have me on your show because I've written my book or whatever it is. Yes. <laughs> That's wonderful. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> Thank you, Betty. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for being here. Like, share, subscribe, and tell us a bit what you think about speaking to flowers or anything else that we've spoken about. Let's have a conversation and just because we can. Thank you, everyone. Thank you again, Betty, and we'll see you all soon. Thank you, Karina. Bye for now.